Hey guys, today we're going to start our uh, lesson about the Civil War, the battles and the fighting and everything that happened in it. Um, you're going to have two days to complete this uh, ad puzzle and, and lesson because it is a little bit longer and it is really important. It's got pretty much all the information you need to know about the Civil War in it. Um, two things you should have open is this ed puzzle and your notes that you're going to be filling out. This note sheet should look like this. Um, so you can fill in the notes as you go along. If you want to split the screen like that and um, make it smaller so that you can uh, look at both at the same time, that's up to you if you could figure that out. But um, otherwise, you can just pause the video and go back and forth as needed. Um, so I'm going to have the just the PowerPoint pulled up because that's what I'm going to be talking about. But make sure you're also filling in your notes as we go along here and you turn those in at the end as well. Okay, so like I said, we're talking about the Civil War here. Um, we talked about it a little bit before break, we talked about the advantages of both sides uh, and things like that, but now we're gonna get into the actual events of the war. So a few warm up questions. What state was the first state to secede? So you look at the map, it shows the northern states, the southern states, the border states, and when each state seceded. So remember this word secede is one of your vocabulary words that you should have done the assignment on the last two days. Secede means to leave or pull away from the union or the country. So basically what's gonna happen is that the southern states, the slave states, once Abraham Lincoln is elected president, they know that he is not a supporter of slavery. He's not necessarily trying to take away everyone's slaves at this time, but they know that that could be the eventual reality that slavery could potentially become illegal while he's president. So if you look at the map, it gives the dates of when each state is going to secede or leave the United States and join the Confederacy. And the first state to do that is going to be South Carolina in December of 1860. Remember, they threatened to secede all the way back in the nullification crisis, and now that they're thinking they're going to lose their slaves, they're going to be the first to do that. What state was the last state to secede? If you look at all the dates, we have May and June of 61 is going to be the last states to secede. So that's going to be Tennessee. Being the last, so you see, all these states are going to be the Southern Confederate states. You have Texas, where we live now, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia are all going to decide they want to leave. They want to keep their slaves. They're going to form the Confederacy. Okay, you have these states that were slave states that actually stayed with the North. They did not want to leave the United States. So you see, you didn't have to be a free state to be part of the Union, right? Slavery was not illegal yet, so they stayed with President Lincoln and the United States. So let's get into some of the battles. Well, before we do that, we kind of did this before break, but it's still important to know that what were the advantages of both sides? The Union, that's the North, they had many more factories, people, and railroads. Where we talked about them being industrial. Remember, a lot of the cities were in the north. They had more rivers and waterways and transportation to help their trade. They had much more weapons and military because of that reason, because they had so many more factories to make the weapons. They had a higher population, so that means they're going to have more soldiers or potential soldiers. Stronger political structure. Remember, the Confederacy had to form themselves. They weren't a country before, so they had to form a government and organize themselves that way. Then you have the Confederacy as the Southern States. They had the better military commanders. Even though they're new, they still had really talented generals like Robert E. Lee that could lead them. They're gonna be fighting at home, right? Because they they leave the United States. So it's really the Union's job to take that land back over to get it back for the United States. So they're gonna be fighting at home, which is helpful in several ways. And they have a great desire for victory, right? They feel like if they lose their slaves, their economy is going to be ruined. So they're kind of fighting for 
you know, their property, their life, what they felt, even though we know obviously slavery was wrong. Okay, so the war itself is going to start in South Carolina, because right? remember they're the first state to succeed at a place called Fort Sumter. Okay, so the Confederacy is going to attack this fort right near Charleston in South Carolina. President Lincoln, right, he's the head of the Union because he's the President of the United States. He's going to send resources for soldiers that are trapped there, that's being attacked. On April 12th, 1861, the Confederates start to bombard or bomb or attack the fort, which is actually my birthday. Shout out all my Aries out there. Okay, I know we're not going to have the best birthday, but yeah, my birthday started in the Civil War. And then that is the beginning of the Civil War, right? Now the South is attacking the North officially. Once again, guys, make sure that you are pausing if you need to to get those notes. Right on your note sheet. Um, I, can, I don't have mine, but um, and you're filling in those blanks as we go along here. Bull Run first major battle. It's going to take place outside of Manassas, Virginia, between Washington D.C. and Richmond. Okay, and the Union is going to lose this battle, and that's going to be a shock. Cause like we said, they have more people, they have more weapons. Okay, and it's going to show that the South is ready to fight and that this is not going to be an easy war by any means. And a second battle of Bull Run we fought one year later. Okay, and then next, next we have Shiloh. That's going to be in April 1862, so about a year after the war begins. General, you remember, we have to know our generals. Ulysses S. Grant, who's going to be a future president, he's a general the commander of the Union Army, the North Army. He's going to invade Shiloh, Tennessee. Okay, and this shows that the North is going to do whatever it takes to preserve the Union. At first, the North was kind of fighting scared. They didn't want to lose too many men, but this kind of showed that they are all and they are willing to fight as hard as they need to to win this war. Then you have Auntie Anne. Okay, General Robert E. Lee, right? He's the general of the Confederacy. Very talented general. He's going to invade Maryland in September 1862. Remember, Maryland is was one of those border states that actually had slaves, but is going to stay with the North. Okay, so South's going to invade Maryland. Okay, and this is going to be the bloodiest single day in American history, then the largest one-day casualty: twenty-three thousand Americans between the North and the South are either killed or seriously wounded. Okay, this is going to be uh, a victory for the Union, but it just shows how incredibly bloody this battle is going to be. So I'm going to take a second to pause. Once again, make sure you're filling in those notes. If you need to pause the video, if you need to rewind the video, you can do that. Here's just a picture of the carnage, the absolute tragedy that's happening here. Remember, these are all Americans, right? Regardless of whether they had differences north and south, you're still fighting against your own people. Sometimes you might have family members in the south if you're from the north, and you're literally killing each other. Okay, you have Lincoln there discussing his plans. So after this battle, President Abraham Lincoln is going to issue this statement, this document, this speech, this decree called the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay, and the word emancipation means like to be freed. Okay, and proclamation is like a statement. So Lincoln is going to make this speech where he says that all the slaves in the Confederacy are now free. Okay, but remember, he's saying oh, the slaves and only the Confederacy, that's what says in the rebelling states, are free. He's not even freeing the slaves in that are fighting for the Union in some areas. Right? All these states right here, they still have slaves, and Lincoln does not free them with this. 
why do you think he might not free the slaves in states that are fighting on his side? What might he try be trying not to do? Just take a second and think about that. Why would he not free all the slaves? Okay, my answer for that would be that he, he doesn't want to make, he doesn't upset the states that are fighting with him. He doesn't want to lose support of those states. So he's going to tell all the slaves in the South that they're free. But the problem with that is that, you know, he doesn't control the South right now. The Confederacy does. As he frees, fights more areas, he will free slaves that, that they defeat the Confederacy at. But it doesn't really do anything right away. But now, but what it really does, the importance of it, if it now makes this war about fighting against slavery, he's saying that we are going to free the slaves in the South. Then you have Gettysburg, which is probably the most important and famous battle of the Civil War. Okay, General Lee, Southern General Robert E. Lee, invades Pennsylvania, a northern state, in the summer of 1863. Okay, over three days in July, the Union is going to defeat the Confederates, and this is going to be the major turning point of the war. And we talk about a turning point, that's usually when one side starts decisively winning. So now the Union, after this huge battle, is going to start to win the war. Okay, and it was just a massive, massive battle with lots of casualties. After the speech, uh, sorry, after the battle, Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln is going to travel down there himself, and he's going to give probably his most famous and important speech. Okay, he goes to the actual, the battlefield, the graveyard where the soldiers are being buried and gives this speech. Okay, he says that this is a war to preserve or save the country. Okay, he said that we're one nation, right, and we need to win this war so that all these people are not dying in vain so that the United States can be saved and brought to, brought together better than ever. If you ever heard the term four score and seven years ago, that's where this, it comes from this speech. Okay. We're going to skip ahead a bit because those are all the battles that you really need to know. Um, like we said, the union would start to win the war after that. And a few years later, in April of 1865, about just about four years after the war began, um, the South is going to surrender as it becomes clear that the North is going to win. Um, General Lee is going to surrender his army of North in Northern Virginia. Okay, and this Apotomix Courthouse, this is a small town and location. They they met up in the courthouse in this small town to formally surrender and end the war. Okay, you see General Grant and General Lee shaking hands to formally end the fighting. Okay, and the North is going to win. But we have to try to remember this location. It's one of your vocabulary words as well. The Apotomix Courthouse is where the war would come to an end. This war is going to have significant repercussions. Okay, it's going to bring America back together as far as all the southern states are now back part of the country. But you could imagine what it's like trying to bring the country back together after that time, right? Hundreds of thousands of people killed or injured. Um, they're ki they were killing each other. They still don't agree on many things, but now they have to try to come back together as one country. Okay. And that's going to be a really difficult process. It's going to last decades. Okay. And a few, and not long after the war, Abraham Lincoln is going to be assassinated or murdered in a theater. And we'll talk about that more uh, next week because of uh, someone who was pro-South and pro-slavery and didn't like that he is forcing the slaves to be free and that he defeated the South in the war. So I want you to look at this exit ticket here. Um, I want you to look back at your notes page that you should have been filling out. And I want you to um, give me the correct answer here on this ad puzzle for this exit ticket. What it's asking is you to match the battle to its description or importance. So, Auntie Tam, which one would fit that? Look back in your notes and complete that. And then you are done with your lesson.
Um, don't forget to participate in the coronavirus discussions every day. Get that extra credit, especially if your grade was low before um, or if you might got some of these wrong. Um, but thank you for participating, and I'll be talking to you soon.